it is our it is our pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Professor uh, Mo'un Israel. Professor is the director uh, of the Center of Advanced Communication, Villanova University, USA. Uh, uh, his talk today about the radio uh, frequency. Uh, let, me, let me check the talk. Okay. The, the radio frequency consists of uh, consistency and the coverage. Uh, let us to uh, give you uh, give the mic to Dr. Uh, Amin to uh, start his presentation. Uh, Dr. Amin. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Tofi. So let me. Uh... Okay, well, uh, good afternoon where you are. Uh, here it's uh, 7 a.m. Uh, in uh, suburban Philadelphia in the US. Uh, first, I wanna uh, thank the, uh, the conference uh, organization committee and leadership for uh, inviting me to give this talk. Uh, they told me that I need to talk about something different from the other two talks that I gave this year in 2021. Uh, which I'm able to do, but after that, I'm gonna cycle through my talks because I'm running out of topics, right? <laughs> so I, I, I believe this is probably the most interesting uh, topic out of the three that I, uh, I gave in 2021 uh, because of the volume of interest uh, that, uh, that it has been receiving and also uh, it touches on so many uh, applications and uh, diverse uh, 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 interests in terms of uh, sensing modality. So that if you are in communications, you are in. If you are in the radar, you are in. If you are in satellite navigation, you are in. Uh, if you are in uh, radio telescopes, you are in. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, you are in if you are doing anything related to uh, radio frequency. So it's, you know, the, the, the philosophical uh, interpretation of RF coexistence and convergence is, uh, can we all live together? I mean, can, can we all the RF services, whether it is communication radar, uh, GPS, whatever it is, can, can we all uh, somehow come to an agreement and be able to use this bandwidth, which happened to be very precious, uh, uh, right? And very expensive, the frequency bandwidth. So that's really the philosophical things. And people have realized that uh, this uh, business as usual, when you say, well, this is mine, this bandwidth is yours, this bandwidth is mine, is no longer uh, working out. And somehow we have to come to an agreement uh, and coexist. Uh, in, in the same band. Uh, how are we gonna do that? That's actually the essence of, uh, of this talk. So the motivation is, uh, in, unfortunately, because I'm more of a radar than communications. <laughs> radar is losing to the communications because communications is profit, profit driven, you know, they generate billions of dollars. Right? Uh, and, and before the radar was able to make an argument, listen, no, this is a very critical technology. I mean, don't come near me. This is my bandwidth, stay out, right? Uh, then, he, then the radar lost. Right? They say, well, you know, we, uh, we cannot keep those bands just for you. I mean, you have to share, right? So that is the first thing is, is the radar is losing to communication, not the communications uh, are, using, are losing to the radar. It's the other way around, right? One pressing problem, of course, is spectral congestion. Uh, like uh, more and more people are hungry for bandwidth, right? And when you are hungry for bandwidth, you are infringing over your neighbors, your neighbors in the spectrum, uh, along the spectrum axis. Right? So it's like you have a house, you wanna enlarge your house, and then you are getting into your neighbor yards. Right? Uh, so this becomes very congested. Uh, and uh, they are looking for uh, something that uncontested uh, shared uh, bandwidth. Uh, so there is a there is a growing interest uh, and uh, and strong need for bold and new concepts. Uh, 
with the potential to uh, precipitate significant improvements in the spectral conditions. So uh, in, in essence, you would like to have simultaneous operations of the radar target because the radar, what the radar does is try to illuminate the target, right? Trying to find where the target is, how far the target is from you and the velocity of the target and what kind of target it is, right? I mean, that is the mission of the radar, right? Uh, at the same time, the, the wireless services are all about quality of service, uh, right? Uh, so this have to coexist together and that defines the area of coexistence. So the area of coexistence, uh, you, not necessarily between uh, radar and communications that this is the, uh, the focus of this talk, but uh, we have been doing radio telescopes uh, looking for uh, ways to uh, remove the interference because the radio telescope signals is very, you know, very weak and uh, very subject to uh, any type of interference. So, uh, so uh, the RF services are, you know, are not confined only to the radar and the uh, and the communications, right? Uh, but that's we're going to be focused on. I want to go back to the slide. You know, these are two references of mine. Uh, if your time permits, and if you are interested, you can certainly read those are very recent. One actually is 2021, the other one is 2019. It gives you kind of a review and a kind of a uh, global view, if you will, of, uh, of this area. But certainly there are so many other uh, equally important, even more important references, but you will see when you read those two papers that the references cited there are also very, uh, very key. Okay, so this is, again, I, I try to explain things in a very uh, simple means. That's the way I understand it, right? So when you say, well, let us, uh, let us live together, let's coexist in the same frequency band. What are you talking about? You know, you talk about spectrum sharing, right? So what kind of sharing? I mean, you can share an apple, right? When you share an apple, well, this is mine and this is yours, <laughs> right? So that's actually divide. Well, that's not a very efficient way to share the spectrum. Again, because again, yours is yours and mine is mine, right? So we divide the spectrum and everybody goes his own way. I mean, that is not uh, an efficient, effective way of sharing the frequency band, right? But I have another uh, uh, metaphorical uh, representation of sharing. Suppose that you are sharing a house with your friends. And then you decide about, okay, well, I am free to go in any room I like. So as my friends, my friends can go in any room in the house they like. So we can all roam uh, you know, uh, 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 in the house and think about the room as a bandwidth. So each room is a band, right? So the effective sharing is that uh, you can, you can use any room you like, but you cannot be in the same room in the same time. So if I use this sub band, you're using the other sub band. If you use this sub band, you're the other sub band. But I am free to use all the sub bands within the bandwidth, right? But we cannot be in the same, in the same sub band at the same time. But I can roam around all the bandwidths, right? So it's not like an apple, this is now, Yours is yours and it's gonna be yours forever. No, right? So if you move around, I also move around, but we don't be in the same room. So if you're in the dining room, I'm in the living room. If you are in the bedroom, I am in the balcony, right? Uh, uh, and uh, uh, that's the way we call it uh, uh, the dynamic allocation. So that's a more effective way of, of sharing the spectrum. In fact, uh, you can look at it as in, in this type of sharing, is there a kind of a, a, a landlord? Is there an owner of this house? The owner of this house, you say, well, I'm gonna choose the room, right? Based on my choice of the room where I'm gonna be, you, you guys decide about what other rooms, right? So I am the primary, I am the primary user. I make the first choice of the room, I would be in the dining room, right? You guys go and find other rooms for yourself, but I make a decision. We call that a primary user. The other people who's gonna wait for my decision as a primary, they're called secondary users. 
So the primary has a right of way and the secondary has to yield. So as you can see here, we can say there is a radar in communication, the radar in blue, these are bands and this is time. Uh, so this figure itself does not tell you whether this is equal rights, that they are working together, right? Or somebody has a primary role and the other has a secondary role. Right? So this has been really the, the essence of this area for the last five, six, seven years. Who is the primary? Who is the secondary? Do we have equal rights, right? And that's part of this talk is gonna explain that. But when we went back and looked at communications and radar, definitely are so many people in communications and few people in radar. And this is changing because the radar now has uh, growing civilian applications, not necessarily defense and security. Right? But if you look at, at those two areas, there are so many things in common between communications and radar. I mean, both of them use carrier frequency. Right? Both of them need bandwidth. Right? Both of them use signal waveforms, right? I mean, the waveforms are different, right? And in the communication and digital waveform, and the constellation of the all of these other things. And the radar, you know, they need a, a waveform with very attractive uh, ambiguity function characteristic because it wanna resolve targets, right? Uh, both of them need power, right? Uh, uh, in communication, you have to do channel coding and, and radar, you have to do something a little bit different called coherent processing, right? In order to accumulate the power because the target is far away and the signal return is very weak, right? Then both of them use antenna arrays, right? I mean, nowadays, seldomly you find a device that has only one antenna. So both of them have aperture, right? Aperture can be very small, can be very wide. So there are so many common uh, uh, components, actually, between the radar and communication. The missions are different, right? That certainly the two missions are different. So part of this coexistence recognizes this common uh, 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 components or, or common behavior. I mean, certainly they agree on something, disagree on other things. So that is part of the coexistence. So I'm going to show you something, in fact, at the, as they say, right out of the oven. This has been in the last few weeks, right? People have come together uh, to define what coexistence is. So now, as we speak, actually, and, and you know, because it started a few weeks ago and is still continuing. And what I'm sharing with you is something that uh, as, as recent as probably yesterday. So what was the definition of coexistence? You can see here you have cooperative coexistence. Right, uh, let me... Uh, So you have cooperative coexistence, right? And cooperative coexistence, the block on the left, is that you start designing the communication and the radar systems with an understanding, right? There is some kind of an understanding about using the bandwidth, right? The non-cooperative is no. Non-cooperative is, well, I'm gonna use this band and if you interfere with me, I'm gonna have to null you. I'm gonna have to notch you, right? Either through filtering, notch filter, or beam forming nulling, right? So that's called non-cooperative. In fact, non-cooperative is very useful and very ubiquitous, right? I understand, by the way, that uh, 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 I have to put resources in order to get rid of your signal. But this is different than if I want to get rid of a jammer, right? The jammer is a signal that I don't know. But to get rid of you, you are the communications. I know your modulations, right? I mean, you are in the neighborhood, right? You and I are friends. It's just we are competing for the same band. So to get rid of something, I know the modulation. I know where the towers are, right? I am the radar. Right? So it becomes a little simpler to remove a communication interference than removing a jammer, because jammer is trying to you know, deceive you, 
right, to fool you. Right? So this is a non-cooperative area. So the radar coexistence as of the definition as of as recent as a few days ago, right? Uh, it's a form of spectrum sharing where a radar occupies the same frequency band as a wireless device, not necessarily at the same time. The cooperative radar coexistence, two or more systems, right? In general, RF system, exchange information a priori on in real time to mitigate interference system may be separate, requiring synchronization, coordination, or maybe integrated into a uniform platform. Now, stop at this uniform platform. Uniform platform meaning that you have the same device. Think about your phone. Your phone is not only a phone, it's also a radar. So you have a unified device, a unified platform that is multifunctional. If it is radar communication, we call it dual function. Right? So this is the cooperative. Right? The non-cooperative is the same thing, except that, right, that I have to uh, 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 operate with the assumption that you're going to interfere with me, and I have to put out resources to get rid of you. Now, the cooperative, no, the cooperative, I know when you're going to be using your uh, resources, when you're going to be uh, uh, applying your bands. So we have an agreement. I know a priori where you are going as a communication service. Right? And then cooperative, I know nothing about it. And I have to sense and get rid of the communication part. Right? So as I mentioned, we the people are revisiting the IEEE standard 686-217 for now uh, new definitions that will include the coexistence. Right? Now, Again, this is something that uh, we have been working with our colleagues uh, in the radar and communication community to come up with those definitions. Under the non-cooperative, right? You can be the primary, the radar can be the primary or can be the secondary, or you can have a dual role. Sometimes the radar has monopoly over the band. Sometimes, no, has times in the communication has a monopoly. Sometimes you say, well, you know, some of this is yours, some of this is mine. Sometimes I, I am the primary, sometimes I am the secondary. Right? Uh, so under the primary, you need to mitigate, as I mentioned, you need to mitigate the communication interference. Under the secondary, which is the block on the right, is very interesting because now the radar that used to be uh, uh, something you don't negotiate with, right? the bands of the radar, uh, used to be untouchable. Now, now all of a sudden the radar is secondary, right? The radar has to sense the bands which the communications are not using. So the radar becomes opportunist, right? Sensing which bands are vacant, which band are available. Then it zooms in and use it for target tracking, target detection, and target classification. Now, this is completely new to the radar, and the radar community, in fact, does not like it. But you have to live with it because uh, money talks, and the wireless industry is growing and generating billions and billions of money. So, for the first time, the radar is taking a backseat to the communications, right? And we're going to be talking about this one here. The cooperative, uh, there is two ways, right? The co design and the dual function. The co-design is that the radar communication will sit on a table, right? And say, well, you know, let us now design a common protocol to be able to use this bandwidth. I'm gonna use it this time, this way, you're gonna use it this time, this way. So there is a prior agreement that's a co-design. The dual function, which I'm gonna stress in this talk, is a little bit different. The dual function is somebody owns the band first. Think about it as this is your house, right? So think about the radar owns the house. It owns the system. It owns the bandwidth. It owns the antennas. It owns the hardware. It owns the power. Then the communication comes in and say, listen, radar, right? Uh, I really would like to use some of your resources. So somebody is a guest 
guest you know, at your house, right? You are the landlord, right? So you tell this guest, well, you know, uh, I'm gonna give you this room, but as long as you don't bother me, right? I am okay with it, right? So what do you mean bother me? You say, in radar terminology, you don't change my bandwidth. You don't change my power. You don't change my signal waveform. You don't change my antennas. You don't change my average. So you are welcome to use this room as long as you are very transparent to me. You know, I am the one who is living in this house, right? So that becomes a dual function of radar communication. Radar comes first because it's a legacy system, okay? So the communications now try to use the radar resources to transmit message, to transmit the signals, to transmit the information itself, right? So before we get into more in this, right? So what is the radar really? Because probably you are more familiar with communication than radar. So radar, it sends you know, periodic pulses, as you can see here, right? The, the, the one uh, uh, between the pulses cause slow time, and the, the pulse itself doesn't have to be rectangular as it is for uh, presentation, but the pulse can be uh, chirp, can be of any form, right? So we call that fast time, which is the time within the pulse. The time in between the pulse we call slow time. Then, uh, of course, the beam is towards the target, which can be mechanically or through electronically through antenna array, right? The, the signal hits the target, comes back, right? it comes back delayed and comes back, of course, attenuated because of the reflection, because of the distance traveled. So the radar gather uh, a bunch of those returns in what's called the coherent processing interval and tries to uh, discern information about where the target is, our distance, and its velocity. So this is a, the, 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 what, the, what the radar does, right? And then it changes the beams, right? Um, for radar tracking, it, it will, uh, or surveillance, it will move the beams in different, in different directions. Right? So in the non-cooperative, right, this radar now, needs to, as I mentioned, needs to filter out the communications. It has no choice, right? The communications which were forbidden before to even come close to the radar band. Now it is in the radar band and the radar has the duty and the responsibility to get rid of this interference. How to get rid of it? There is some good news. The communication signal is narrow band. The radar pulse is wide band. So the radar actually can keep almost 99% of its spectrum, right? And notch the frequency where the uh, uh, wireless interference comes in. So you can notch it in frequency. You can also, by the way, notch it in angle because your phone is not in the same angle as the target, <laughs> right? So, or, or the wireless tower is not in the same angle as the target. So here you can see two videos, right? And the one on the right, right? The, the, the wireless phone is, is moving and the beam is fixed towards the target, right? And you can see the null, right? You can see where the, the null is. The one on the left is the target is moving and the wireless tower is fixed. So you can see the arrow is always in a null. That means the signal coming from this direction is being nulled. That means it's not going to make any difference to the radar. So there are ways that we have been doing to remove the interference, and certainly those ways can be carried out in this case. Right? So let us talk, now talk about the radar as a secondary. The radar as a secondary, it has to yield to the communication. So the radar is being hit twice. The first time it was told that the communication will operate, radar, it's gonna operate in your band and you have to remove this communication. Then it gets worse to the radar. Now the radar is, is, is being told that it has to take a second year old. Right? So the communication first decide about which bands it's using. And then if there are bands available, 
then the radar can come in, which in a way it is actually humiliating to the radar that used to be the most powerful uh, man you know, in the block. Right? So recent global regulatory practices have focused on spectrum auctions to earn revenue and it's all about money and remote the uh, prolification and commercial communication systems. A recent C-band auction of service uh, licenses between 3.7 and 3.9 gigahertz band raised over 81 billion to promote the 5G. So the, uh, these regulatory auctions have prompted a possible role reversal now. The radar now is in the backseat, right? Of the radar use status, hence the radar becomes the secondary user for the first time. As a secondary user, the radar attempts to access the spectrum and mitigate neutral interference. This requires the radar to modify both transmitters. So the radar has to do something now to be secondary, right? It has to modify its signal, its bandwidth, its uh, uh, array structure, the transmitter and the receiver, and so on. So, right? so now, as the radar as a secondary, right, it cannot use the band unless it is vacant. So it has to sense. So number one is to sense. That's called spectral sensing. Right? After it senses, it finds out some bands are occupied. These bands it cannot touch. Forbidden because it's secondary. Radar is not primary. The bands which are not uh, uh, occupied, then the radar can can come in. So the cognitive radar, all software define radar, not software defined radio, right? It senses, it learns the environment. Based on that learning, it decides, what should I do? I need to like, you know, those bands now like Swiss cheese, right? I mean, there are holes in these bands. Those holes are the communications band. You cannot touch them, but you have the rest, right? So how can you aggregate the rest of the bands to help you the radar of doing your function, right? So you sense, you learn, you decide, and then you adapt. This is really called the perception I action cycle that underpins most of the research these days, right? Because how you're gonna learn, what you're gonna decide, and how you're gonna adapt to the primary communication user. And there are so many papers written recently on, on this. So the radar spectral sensing is a paradigm shift for effective non-cooperative spectral sharing. Now for the radar to do so, it has to have very good understanding of the communications uh, system. Right? So you no longer you can say I'm in radar and you are in communications. Now those two fields have very much uh, become entwined and merged. So let's now talk about the dual function and the co-design. So this is called part of the cooperative. So in dual function, as I mentioned, to think about it, you are the landlord, you are the owner of this house, right? Dual function radar communication, the radar comes before communications, right? And the communications want to use your, your rooms, right? Your, your, your house, but uh, you, you cannot really allow the communication to come in, change the furniture and all of the things. They say, no, no, you know, uh, you know I'm gonna let you communication use part of my house, as long as I don't see you, right? As long as they don't bother me, right? I mean, so this is a concept emerging now when you have a legacy system and another system comes and say, could you please, uh, like you, for example, you are driving, uh, I have a colleague here at the Nile University, he lives in Manuel, right? That's where I grew up. So let's say you are driving from in Manuel to uh, the Nile University. So you are the owner of the car and things. Then I comes in, I say, well, I'm, you know, could you give me a ride? I'm gonna just sit in the back seat. Don't worry about me, right? You just go and you, know, you turn right, turn left. You know, you can do anything you like, right? You know, but it's just a final destination. So that is the concept of dual function radar communication where the radar comes first. There's a red dual function communication radar where the communications comes first. Where now the communications is the landlord and the radar is begging the communication or asking or requesting to use some of the facilities, but that's not gonna be talk, we're talking about. The other concept is called co-design. Co-design, there is no one that owns anything, right? We, from the start, we're gonna say, you know, let's come to understanding, let's find out a protocol that we can share the, uh, we can design our waveforms, we can design our uh, aperture, 
and this is from at uh, from inception so just think about it as i said you know you have a house right and you are the raider and you own every single thing in this house and here is guys a communication i'm going to say you know i'm going to only confine you to a certain space in my house as long as you don't bother me i actually came up with this definition i coined this definition i call it a system of opportunity like a house of opportunity not a signal of opportunity system of opportunity the communications look at the radar system as a system of opportunity how can i make use of this system the radar is very expensive right it has large bandwidth it has large power it has large aperture these are all good for communications right so i want to take advantage of this opportunity that the radar agreed that i'm going to use some of its resources so i call it a system of opportunity right so the question here is how i'm going to take advantage of this opportunity how i'm going to send my message and the communications right what do i do well you can say well you can send your message in the pulse that means embed your message in the radar pulse or embed your message in your radar beam right? so now you have to transmit your messages using the radar protocols you cannot change anything for the radar radar is going to keep its pulse is going to keep its waveform it's going to keep its beam it's just you have to work it out and that's what we're going to talk about the next 20 minutes or so, right? So here is the communication. You have the constellations here. So the question here is that how can you embed, <clears throat> right? How you can embed these messages, these symbols, how can you embed them in the radar waveforms, in the radar beams? Right? This is what has been very hot subject in the last seven years, actually, seven years ago when I, when I got into it, when it just emerged. So we talked about signal of opportunity and system. Signal of opportunity is a concept that has been known for many, many years. It's called passive radar. In fact, we worked on border security. Signal of opportunity, meaning that you don't transmit the signal. You use somebody else's signal. For example, in border security, you cannot put a radar transmitter there. I mean, it's going to be very expensive. But uh, along the border, of course, between uh, Mexico and the US, Right there are uh, there are uh, uh, FM radio. There is TV signals. There is uh, GPS. These are all signals of opportunity. So the radar does not transmit, but the radar receives. Right. So the 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 radar is using other signals that's not his. Right. But it has its own receiver. Right. In the system of opportunity, now the communications is using the radar system, but hopefully without changing much of its functionality, right? So how are you gonna embed, let's put it this way. How, gonna, how, can, I, how can you send this, the, your, your symbol in the, in the radar parameters? So you can, you can alter the pulse. That means take the radar pulse, multiply it by your symbol, right? That's one way to embed. Or you can take your communication signal waveform and multiply it by the pulse. Or you can change the pulse from one pulse repetition period to another. So now you're sending this pulse, the next pulse will be different depending on the symbol itself. Or you can send your signal in the beam. You can send your signal in the radar beam. And there are many other ways you can do to send your communication symbol, right? If you're using MIMO radar, there are ways to do it. If you're using a sparse array, you can also try to uh, send your messages and hopefully we'll be able to visit uh, all of the things. So uh, these are the objectives of the dual function where the communications try to send the symbols using the radar parameters. Okay. Why this area has come about? Because if you take a look at this area, you, you need really to uh, be versed in, uh, first of all, in 
convex optimization and some of the recent advances, digital beam formers, uh, maturity of software defined review, all of this have come together to make this area really possible. Right? So we would like now to uh, enable the radar platforms to house voice. So the radar will be able to house voice and data transmissions uh, uh, in its parameters. So the applications here, I mean, definitely the automotive is prime applications, right? So the car behind you is trying to measure how far you are uh, from it and also try to communicate information to you, right? So instead of having a different radar signal and a different communication link, it actually, the car behind you, embed, hide, embed is hiding, hide the, the, the communication symbols in the radar waveforms, right? So there is no reason to have a, a communication link. The same thing, by the way, if there is a ground station communicating with the pilot, right, about some information, and also the ground station trying to find out how far the target is. So the ground station does the radar because wanna find, find how far, and then trying to communicate these messages to the pilot so it can embed these messages in the radar waveforms that's shown here in, in black. So no longer we're gonna use a different communication link the communication signal will be embedded in the radar waveforms, right? And uh, certainly in, in security and defense, right? Again, you know, you have two radars with basically uh, two, two uh, uh, ships communicating to each other about the target information, right? So, so the one on the left, which is radar A, senses the target, trying to share this information with the radar B, right? But it's not gonna share it through a communication link, no, is gonna embed, is gonna hide this information in the radar box. Right. So the first one, we're gonna go quickly over it. <clears throat> How are you gonna embed and hide the communication signals in the radar parameters? So the first one is just, you take your symbols and you multiply the symbols by the radar pulses. So you can see here, when you have bit one, you multiply this pulse by one, the other one by 180 degrees, right? You have a phase shift. Right? So each one will be multiplied by different symbols. So that's the simplest way to do it, right? On the return, so these embedded pulses will go and hit the target, come back, right? It's come back attenuated, as you can see here, the received ones. Then the radar does what's called match filter, because that's the way the radar does. It can matches to the embedded radar waveform, or it can clean the return radar pulse from the communication symbol. How it can clean it? Well, listen, it is the same platform. The radar is aware of what communication symbols it got embedded. So as it was multiplied, it can be multiplied or can divide it, right? So it can clean it before it does match filter. Either way, you're gonna get the same answer in terms of the ambiguity function. So the simplest thing is to multiply the radar pulse pulses by your communication symbols. That's the first simple thing. The other one is that accumulate a number of your symbols, come up with a digital modulation waveform, multiply this waveform by the pulse. Don't you have to be aware this multiplication is convolution in frequency and convolution frequency will increase the bandwidth. So you have to be very careful with that because the radar does not want to increase its bandwidth and infringe over others, right? So that is actually uh, uh, it's a, it's a better way than the previous one, but you have to be cognizant of the fact that you don't increase the bandwidth, right? So in this case, by the way, instead of modulating a carrier, you are modulating the radar waveform. So that's what we talked about. The third one, <clears throat> in terms of embedding, so we talked about multiplying the radar pulse by the symbol, multiplying the radar pulse by the digital communication waveform. Then there's another way to embed, which I, I'm gonna change the radar pulses. For example, this is a chair, right? So if I have the bit one, I send a rising chair. 
If I have bit zero, I send a falling chirp, right? So the radar doesn't bother, by the way, changing, rising, and falling because it's still a chirp, right? It has very good important properties. This is called index modulation or code shift key, where I change the radar pulses according to the modulation symbols. And the radar will be happy to do so because that's a very minor, minor changes, right? Uh, people who are working on waveform design, and there is uh, hundreds and thousands of people over the world trying to design orthogonal waveforms, certainly communication as well. You can forget about rising and falling. You can come up with uh, a large number of symbols with a large number of radar waveforms or radar pulses that are orthogonal, right? So each one now will, will represent a symbol. So now you can represent a much uh, higher constellation order right, uh, than just a binary ones and zeros, right? Because now you have a large number of symbols that you can use. So uh, designing of orthogonal waveforms becomes very handy in, in this case. Uh, and this is just one example. This is a gold code, uh, that very well known. So I can use a gold code as uh, index modulation. The third one, which is uh, with the radar beam, so think about it, right? Now, before I use the radar pulse, right? I multiplied it by the symbol. I multiply by digital communication waveform. I also change the pulse, right? According to the symbols. Now I'm not going to change the pulses. I'm going to change the beam. So think about it. If I, if your, if your message is one, if the communication message is one, here is the beam. If it is zero, this is the beam, right? If it is one, here is the beam. So you switch the beams according to the communication symbols, but the radar doesn't like that because the beam is pointing to the target, cannot change back and forth, right? So what we're gonna do is we're not gonna change the beams, we're gonna change the side lobes. The side lobes the radar doesn't care about. As long as you don't touch the main lobe, the main beam that works towards the target, you can play with the side lobes. It's not important to the radar. So now what I'm gonna do, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave the main beam alone, right? The radar will tell me, okay, I don't care about the side loops. So you send your friend the symbols that you wanna have. Use the side loops. As you can see here, I can have different levels of the side loops depending on the different symbols, right? So here are four different symbols, right? I can have different, the radar doesn't care about the side loops. But now you are designing four beams. All of them are identical in the main beam, but they differ in the side loop along the user direction, right? So now I'm having beam modulation, right? So that I, that I embed the communication messages in the beam former, not in the pulses, right? And actually, uh, we get, we came up with that technique that now is very ubiquitous, but you know, Veranova takes full credit for that. Right? Uh, then you know there are certainly a lots of analysis about you know the communication, this phone, this this communication receiver, what is the BER and all the things. That there's a lot of papers that uh, went dived into that and don't have time for that. But what uh, what have to be uh, observed is that you make sure that the eavesdropper, so you are sending your friend, you know where it is, right? Uh, these messages or this communication symbols, you can, also, you can also show that other people were not gonna receive, only your friend is gonna have very small BR, and then other people in different directions will have a very large BR, right? So it's a low probability of intercept, right? Then not only you can change the amplitude, right? You can change the phase, so along the direction of your friend that you would like to send information to, we can change that phase. Right? So it becomes phase shift king, right? It's a phase shift king approach. Not only you can have one friend, you can have multiple friends and you design beams such as that, that different side lobes will change according to the messages. Uh, there is a, a, another thing that's emerging. Right? It's called directional modulation. So su suppose now I have my radar, right? And then I have my communications. Right? 
in fact, I can design a beam former with the with the with the width W, such as that I send the symbols I like to each one of them. So R here is your symbol vector. The elements of this symbol vector are the symbols going to those users. Different users would have different symbols. Right? W is the weight vector of your beam form. H is a steering vector, depending where your users are. So you give me R. You give me the symbols you want to send to each of your users. right? And I know where they are. right? I come up with W. I come up with this beam former weights, such as that. Solving a least squares problem. This is least square solution, right? Such is that each user will get the message designated to it. It's beautiful. It's called directional modulation. So the symbols are part of the weights, not part of what you you you, you feed it. So let's talk about. Uh, very most interesting, the MIMO radar, right? So the MIMO radar, it has orthogonal waveforms, like MIMO communications, right? So you have phi one to phi m. These are orthogonal. Different antennas will emit different orthogonal waveforms. Now, I can do the same thing I did before. Now, now I have multiple antennas, right? So each antenna, I will embed a symbol. So how many antennas do you have? I have m antennas. Well, I can embed m symbols at the same time by simple multiplication. That is called pulse scaling. Now I increase the pulse rate, the communication rate, the bit rate by the number of antennas available to me. Or I can do pulse modulation, like frequency hopping, for example. Right? In each hop, I can multiply each hop by a symbol. And I have so many hops, so I have many symbols. And I have so many antennas. So now I increase the number of symbols as well. That is a high data rate approach. Right? Then I can do something. There are many things you can do, right? So you can do pulse per permutation. What do you mean? If I want to send symbol one, I send these waveforms phi one to phi m from those antennas. Right? Here it is, symbol one. If I want to change to symbol two, I shuffle the waveforms. So phi one is no longer sent from antenna one, it's sent from antenna three. Phi three is sent from antenna five, right? So that's called index modulation, right? So now I kind of coded the symbols in terms of the shuffling matrix, which antenna emits which pulse. And then certainly the communication receiver has to deshuffle that. So let's talk about the last one, the sparse array. We also came up with this one. Think that you know you have only uh, uh, four uh, uh, chains, RF chains, right? And you have seven antennas, right? So for pulse one, for symbol one, you emit from antenna two, four, six, and seven. Well, for symbol two, you emit from one, two, five, and seven. It's again, it's index modulation, right? Depending on the symbol you are changing the radar parameters, right? And certainly you find this in the recent uh, publications. So as I move closer to the end, right? There is a concept emerging very, very important. And if you are, decide to get into this area, you need to be aware of that. It's called metacognition. Metacognition is as if you have three different gears, right? The, the larger gear, the mid-sized gear, and the smallest gear. The larger gear is that it takes a look at you know, the performance, this coexistence. You say, well, maybe it's not working, right? For example, if we talk about uh, this different embedding, you say, well, uh, that type of embedding is not working, right? It's generating lots of errors, right? I'm not happy with it, right? So let's chat, try to change the, the, the type of embedding. Instead of multiplication by a pulse, I'm going to embed in the beam former, for example, right? So somebody is taking a look at the big picture and then directing the embedding according to a global uh, understanding of what is working, what is not working for, for the moment. 
uh, right? So sometimes you can, you can keep a low data rate. Sometimes you cannot keep a low data rate. So the embedding can be, can be different. Okay, so in conclusion, because you told me 45 to 50 minutes, right? in conclusion, uh, this is a very interesting area. And uh, in fact, it takes the fear out of being in Raider because you'll get to know it's not really a big deal, right? Uh, so because now uh, different RF services have to coexist, you need to learn about radar if you are in communications and you need to learn about communications if you are in radar, right? And there is no escape really, because now it's a shared spectrum, it's a shared components, it's a shared aperture, it's a shared power, it's a shared waveform. So you cannot, you cannot look the other way. Right? So the spectral situation awareness, a dynamic spectrum access in congested and contested magnetic environments, that's really the area that we have been talking about. Sharing aperture and spectrum between radar communications moves away from independent systems and dedicated components that's become things of the past and allows for integrated command and control systems and integrated sensor management. Right? The shared aperture and spectrum between radar communication leads to low size, weight, and power consumption requirements that an increasing number of commercial applications demand while facing the spectrum security scarcity uh, challenge. So uh, if your time permits, you know, you can spend a few minutes actually Google that. You will see that the RF coexistence of convergence. There are numerous, numerous special sessions and conferences, numerous uh, special issues. In fact, I led a few of those in several journal publications. Major programs not only in the US, but in Europe and in Southeast Asia, uh, from government research agencies. Right? I mean, we have uh, currently uh, two major uh, uh, research uh, grants and contracts uh, from, the, from NSF, from also DOD, Department of Defense, right? On the coexistence and convergence, right? Uh, look now for application. Automotive is gonna lead, of course, as a civilian application. The aerospace industry you know, is already latched into that. Security and defense applications are also, um, uh, will benefit greatly from this coexistence and convergence. And you know, uh, whatever strides made in civilian applications, it will make its way to security and defense anyhow. So I stop here. Uh, I wish I had more time to uh, dive into each. Okay. <laughs> That, but I think the time of essence. Uh, thanks, Dr. Monis, for, uh, yeah, for useful information and your presentation. We have uh, five minutes for uh, questions and uh, we're moving to the sessions. Uh, any questions? Okay, I have, I have two small questions, Dr. Monis, about what about the uh, consistency between uh, RF and optical? You talk about RF in general, uh, consistent in an RF domain. What about if we would like to make a uh, consistency when RF and optical in the, as well? Yes, so thank you. So basically, I mean, the, the concept of coexistence, first you have to uh, define the competition. Are there competition of the same bandwidth, right? Uh, now, if you say that I'm gonna have a system that does RF at the same way does optical, then you have to ask yourself is that, are there components there that can be used for RF as well as to use for optical, right? Yeah. So the concept of coexistence about common components, common bandwidth, common, as I said, system of opportunity, right? But if it happens that you cannot reconcile that those two services will ever use the same component, the same converter, the same down converter, the same chains, right? They have to use different chains. Then the coexistence becomes simpler because well, listen, you know, yeah. We, we, yeah. I can't reconcile that. So you know, each one has to use its own. But certainly it's worth looking into it and defining areas where uh, they will benefit from uh, uh, sharing uh, parameters and uh, and facilities resources. Okay, uh, last last one. Uh, what about the future of uh, terahertz uh, ra ra radars? 
it is uh, futures or what is your yes absolutely uh, but you know the, the higher the frequency the uh, sometimes the higher the frequency it comes with challenges in, in designing yeah. components and also in terms of the range right uh, but the, the, but the, the telehertz gives us uh, tremendous access to a very large bandwidth, right? Yeah. So now we are, we are moving from the millimeter, still, by the way, the millimeter radar is in its infancy, right? So the millimeter radar now is emerging to be the, 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 the preference, the, 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 yeah. the choice. And people need to stay with the millimeter wave for quite some time before they move on to a higher band. Okay, uh, thanks Dr. Moanis for uh, answering and your inform informative uh, presentation uh, and look forward to see you again uh, for more, more, more presentations as more uh, hot topics uh, in research and, 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 and so on. Thank okay, you. Thank you, and if, thank you. And if any uh, of the attendees has any questions, they can always... Uh, uh, just Dr. Moanis, uh, sorry okay. for interruption. Thank you for the talk. And uh, just I want to remember you that we will take a group photo after uh, this talk. So please, all of you, uh, prepare your camera. Dr. Tafi, uh, uh, please uh, lead this point here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Please, yeah. everyone can, can open uh, this camera. But I will also try to. The gallery yeah i will take the photo now okay one two three thank you thank you for uh, for all uh, so again thank you all right okay very good have a nice conference thank you, yeah, uh, okay. Bye. Nice. Thank, thank, you. thank you thank you dr morris for the talk for the nice talk my, my pleasure my pleasure thank you.